Steve Phillips, our baseball insider, is here. So Shohei Otani releases a statement for the first time since last week's bombshell report. Steve, it's a statement. We know it's vetted by PR people and agents and things like that. But did you see anything in that statement that was maybe different than what you expected to hear from Otani? Well, it's always different than what I expected. I thought it would be all legalese where he would be shut down by lawyers not to respond, don't comment, let the investigation run its course. And he kind of told the story. Now, it's what he wanted us to hear. It's his story, and it's more about what happened and what didn't happen, and not so much about the how, how why, when, or where it all happened. But it's at least some part of the story. and answered some of the questions I think many people had, at least with his version of that which is that he didn't know what was going on where we have been led to believe that he did, that he didn't support sending payments where we were led to believe that he did. And again, you know, there will be people along the way will be able to ask questions of him, interrogate him, interrogate Ippy Mizuhara, his, his interpreter, to be able to truly vet out the real truth in all of this. But I think Otani looked very credible, in my opinion, uh, with the way that he presented himself. He seemed re resolute in everything and in, in, in what he did. He seemed very confident in what he was saying. So we'll see in the end. But certainly, I think he cleared up from his perspective in his story a lot of what was out there with questions that were remaining. Steve, regardless how this all plays out, do you think this is going to linger? It's going to stay with Otani throughout his career? Well, I think the story will, but but I don't know that his image is going to be tainted in any way. Again, it, it remains to be seen once everybody answers questions, they, you know, they, they respond to questions that get asked. But if his story is this and it ends up that this is the truth of it all, then I think that he comes across as a victim. And in many ways, I think it makes him more endearing and more sympathetic to fans uh, if he's not involved in it. It was really somebody taking advantage of him. And it's so hard to be these superstars where you don't let people in. You don't know what people want. So they all put up a wall and a barrier. And when the one guy that you trust the most comes in, and then inevitably, whether he betrayed him or he feels betrayed by him, Ultimately, it does lead to what I would believe a sense of mistrust for everybody out there. And so I think there's so many layers to this that are yet to be told and, and, and unfold. But certainly it's one that, that will be part of the Otani story from this point forward. Let's talk about the Blue Jays, Kevin Gossman. Uh, numbers were good, Steve. Uh, seven strikeouts over three innings. You think he's ready to return to the Jays rotation right now? Boy, he looked great. Through 52 pitches, I think it was. His fastball velocity, 94 to 96, touch 97. His split was midseason form. Really good getting the young Pirates hitters to swing over the top of it. And so, you know, he went three-plus innings. Uh, and, you know, in, in the ideal world, you'd like him to go another outing to get to five innings, stretch out to 75 to 80 pitches. But if he comes through this healthy and recovers and feels okay, I suspect, and I would also agree, I would put him on the active roster, uh, and I'd let him make a start the first time through the rotation. Even if he ends up going four or five innings, that's okay. It's better than the alternative of anybody else stepping in and maybe yep. being limited, or even if they were full force. And so I think it's the right thing for him to be active right now. And Steve, you know, for the bullpen, it's a bit more of a murky situation because John Schneider's saying on Monday, that Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson could potentially start the season on the injured list. How big of a blow would this be to this team to start without these two guys right out of the gate? Yeah, really tough. I mean, the schedule's not easy to begin the season. And, and you know, those late inning guys are critical. You're talking about the eighth inning pitcher and the ninth inning pitcher. And that moves everybody back in the game and change roles with different expectations and different leverage moments that they have to deal with. Now, the Jays do have a deep bullpen. And Yumi Garcia probably goes to that ninth inning, and Trevor Richards pitches some big innings, and Chad Green, who's going to be fully healthy this year, could take some big innings. But it is a big blow because, you know, these are two of the best relievers in baseball in Swanson and Romano, uh, and they need them to be healthy. Now, it's better serve for them to start on the injured list and try to rush back and then have a catastrophic setback where they miss a month at a time. So better to take a little time on the front end so that they're there for the remainder of the season. And Steve makes a great point. It is a tough schedule to start the season. A 10-game road trip that will begin Thursday in the Jays' season opener in St. Petersburg against the Rays. Steve Phillips, thanks for this.